Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and did you know that in order to be happy, you don't have to have all your circumstances in your life be perfect. You can actually use the tools of fasting and ketosis to upregulate neurotransmitters that make you happy for no apparent reason. Curious? I'm gonna dive deep into the neurotransmitters that fasting and ketosis upregulates in this video. Okay, let's talk about the chemicals in your brain that make you happy. I think this is such a crucial conversation to have that I wanted to just contain it in a separate video because not only do we have chemicals that make us happy, but we have chemicals that calm our brain, we have chemicals that make us feel satisfied, and a lot of these chemicals are enhanced through fasting and the ketogenic lifestyle. So this is a really fun topic to bring to you guys. If you're watching this for the first time, know that I've done two other videos leading up to this one to talk about how our brain functions. The first video I talk about how our brain is wired. The second video I talked about how do you get yourself out of fight or flight. So make sure you go back and watch those videos. Today we are talking about happiness hormones, happiness chemicals. How do we maximize these for you guys? Okay, so let's go back to my pictures here and let's go back to this thought that uh, thoughts in our brain, feelings, emotions are transmitted in the brains through neurons. And at the end of neurons are these things called dendrites. And the dendrites are carrying information across from neuron to neuron. And when you get this information going quickly or even through your brain at any pace, what you will notice is you will have a feeling or an emotion. So what causes these neurons to be able to connect with each other is a chemical, a group of chemicals called neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters, think of them like, they're like a hormone, just like insulin or cortisol. They are a, 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 a liquid substance that is going across your dendrites to carry information, make sure that information gets carried through. Okay, so these neurotransmitters all do different things. Like some of you who have anxiety, you're missing the neurotransmitter called GABA that calms the brain. So GABA, what it would do is it will make sure that the messages going across the dendrites are going more slowly. So you feel a little more relaxed. You're not having that quick, quick anxiety, uh, what I call down a rabbit hole of thoughts. If you have enough GABA, it will calm your brain. Some of you are very familiar with the, with the neurotransmitter dopamine. Dopamine, believe it or not, is the neurotransmitter that when you pick up your phone and you have a bunch of text messages or you have, you go to Facebook and you got a bunch of likes or you, you go to YouTube and you've got some notifications, those, that stimulates dopamine. And we're gonna talk about dopamine because there's a whole theory right now that our kids growing up in the, the teenage generation are being so overstimulated by dopamine from all the social media, from their cell phone, from just too much stimulation coming to the brain. So I wanna talk about that because that's a really intriguing thought and I, and I wanna show you how chemically it works. We also have a, a neurotransmitter called serotonin. Serotonin is the neurotransmitter that just makes you feel happy and it regulates mood. It also will, the serotonin is such a powerful um, neurotransmitter, it can decide if you, if you need to be hungry or not be hungry. So it can, it can really regulate your appetite. So there are some key new, uh, neurotransmitters that we can influence through fasting. Okay, so, and you know how I like the science, so I dove deep into the best science I could find out there to explain to you guys how your keto lifestyle, your fasting lifestyle, and your variation lifestyle, how that can have a tremendous impact 
on these neurotransmitters that are going to keep your brain happy. Okay. And w before I dive into how you, how you can work with the enhancing these neurotransmitters, remember that things like Prozac and Zoloft and the drug, all those drugs, all those drugs are doing is trying to manipulate neurotransmitters. I'm just showing you a more natural way to do it. That's in alignment with how your body wants you to take care of it. Okay. So that's, what's so cool about this information. Okay, so let's start off with a study that in the, a lot of uh, really interesting studies have come from Ramadan. So the people who are, pr are practicing Ramadan, it's, uh, they're not eating, in fact, many of them are dry fasting from uh, sunup to sundown. So we have some incredible studies on um, what happens when you do that over a long period of time, where, and this is basically one meal a day, right? If you're doing OMAD, that, that's kind of what they're simulating with Ramadan. And what they have found is that there are three neurotransmitters that will be enhanced during this time of Ramadan as people are practicing uh, the, and honoring those weeks of Ramadan. So the three neurotransmitters, BDNF. BDNF is brain fertilizer. So those of you that are like, oh, I'm not, I just feel like my thoughts aren't coming to me quickly enough or I just can't hold on to information like I used to. I had a, a, a consult the other day with an executive, a top executive that said, I just am having trouble retaining all the information that's coming at me. So this is what happens when your brain starts to degenerate, is these neurons no longer send information across. You don't have enough BDNF to make sure that you're growing the new neurons and keeping these neurons healthy. And so your ability to take in information and retain information become minimal. Well, what they found during Ramadan is that there's a massive increase in BDNF. So it's like brain fertilizer so that you can start to absorb information and you can learn at a deeper level. So it's a, it's a, it's like neurogenesis of these neurons and dendrites. So that is all coming from a 24 hour fast, sun up to sun down. The other um, chemical that they saw improve with Ramadan was NGF, which is also a, a growth factor that will grow these neurons. So if you're feeling like you just are not focused, you're feeling like you're not grabbing information like you used to, if you're, uh, um, maybe you're in a graduate program you need to study, maybe you're in a high performing job where there's a lot of moving parts, you wanna fast. I always say, I'm here in Silicon Valley, we got a lot of people fasting here because they, the brain is such a powerful uh, accelerator for people's careers around here. So the, law, the fasting world is caught on like wildfire around here because people are experiencing what they found in this study. It's improving the, their capacity to learn, okay? Now, the other thing that they found in when studying uh, the, the process of Ramadan and people going through Ramadan was that serotonin levels also went up, okay? Serotonin is what makes us happy. If you don't have a lot of serotonin, you're gonna be kind of blue. If you do have a lot of serotonin, you're gonna be happy. So just something as simple as, as putting in these 24 hour fasts on a regular basis makes your brain grow. It makes you allow to, you to learn information at a deeper level, hold on to information, and it's gonna make you happier. And all you're doing is fasting for 24 hours. How cool is that, okay? So that was the first study I wanted to bring to your attention. Now. I started to dive deeper into the research, and what I found is they did look for dopamine in this study, the Ramadan study, and they noticed that there is no that um, fasting for 24 hours has no effect on dopamine. Okay, now remember, dopamine is that neurotransmitter that it is like our emotional yummy feeling, like when you have that really cool feeling in you, like you just feel so good and you're just in pleasure, you know, whether it's you're eating something that you, your favorite, your keto, keto treat or your favorite food is like gives you that dopamine reaction. Or like I said, you go and you pick up your phone and you're like five of your favorite friends have texted you and you're like, oh my God, I can't wait to hear from you. That is a dopamine rush you're getting. So they found that fasting and this in the Ramadan study did not affect dopamine at all and they tested for it. 
So I thought that was kind of intriguing. But then what I decided to do was go down a rabbit hole of research and see what else I could find about dopamine. And what they did find in a different study, this study was done out of the Journal of Neurophysiology, that what fasting does, and in this study it was another 24 hour fast, what fasting does is it makes your dopamine receptor sites more sensitive. So you may, while you're fasting, you're not producing more dopamine like you do with serotonin and BDNF and NGF, but what you are doing is you're improving these receptor sites for dopamine so that once you go and eat, your, and, and especially if you go eat your favorite food, that all of a sudden dopamine goes up and your these receptor sites on the end of the dendrites are more receptive to dopamine, okay? Now, I could do a whole talk on dopamine because I think this idea that our kids right now are being saturated with so much dopamine stimulus from social media to uh, music to, every, I mean, all every, anything on your phone is just giving you this incredible dopamine rush. And just like we become insulin resistant, we are becoming dopamine resistant. And it's not just our kids, right? It's all of us are in this together and we're con we, we go to a, a stoplight and if it's, if it's red, what do we do? We pick up our phone. I heard that people are taking their cell phones to the bathroom and they're checking Facebook and Instagram in the bathroom. It's because you're addicted to a dopamine. You wanna go and get that next dopamine rush. That we're all doing this because we're addicted to, to dopamine. This is why we can't get away from our cell phones. So if we want to improve dopamine sensitivity, we need to take, I saw this on Facebook the other day, we need to take a dopamine fast, which is basically get off the cell phone, get away from all the stimulus so that our receptor sites can, can receive dopamine at a, an appropriate level again. Well, guess what? This research study I found out of the Journal of Neurophysiology shows that when you do a 24 hour fast, that your dopamine act levels actually go down, but that's okay because serotonin's going up, so you might not feel as satisfied. Dopamine's going down, serotonin's going up, and then when you eat again, whoosh, you get, a, you get a rush of dopamine and the receptor site is more open and more receiving of that dopamine. You're gonna have deeper pleasure. Okay, so think about that. I, I know yesterday I did a 24 hour fast. I felt awesome, I came home, I had a meal, I felt even better after my meal. So know that, uh, that the receptivity of dopamine is really important, just like you guys are trying to get out of insulin resistance, we wanna get you out of dopamine resistance. So, and if you want more, want me to dive down on, uh, more on this, just let me know, because I think this is something that not a lot of people are talking about, we need to talk about it at a deeper level, okay? So that's the, the neurotransmitter dopamine. Now, let's address those of you that are dealing with a lot of anxiety because you guys need more of the neurotransmitter GABA. And the, what I want you to understand is that in your brain, just like you know, I've talked about mTOR and autophagy, how they work in opposition, well, there are two neurotransmitters that work in opposition. One is glutamate and the other is GABA. Glutamate is excitatory. So uh, if you've ever had a reaction to monosodium glutamate, you know that you felt revved up and anxious. That's because glutamate got overstimulated. And when glutamate is up, GABA is down. So when you're eating the wrong foods, processed foods specifically, you are going to be stimulating glutamate. It's going to be excitatory in your brain. And what research is showing is that it actually degenerates these neurons. So this is why I'm like, fasting's awesome, eating good quality food that's not packed with chemicals is even better. So if we can add fasting with, with keeping the, the crappy food that's stimulating glutamate out of your diet, then you're, you're two steps ahead, which is great, okay? So stop stimulating glutamate, but did you know what enhances GABA are ketones. So, the, I mean, this is the, the holy grail of what, everything that we're trying to do here, right? We wanna fast so we can get those ketones. Those ketones are awesome because they tell us that we're burning fat, but they're also awesome because they go into the brain and they tell glutamate, hey, chill out, that we don't need to be excitatory anymore. GABA's in town. We're gonna start creating more GABA so that the brain can calm down. 
Now, those of you who've done like a three to five day water fast, have you not experienced that where you're like so zen, your brain just calms down because you're just getting a massive rush of GABA, okay? So really cool neurotransmitters that you can manipulate, you can facilitate, you can nurture, you can get to produce in large amounts just by fasting. So we got, we've got BDNF that will help you grow and learn. We've got the same thing with NGF. Those are gonna come in your 24 hour fast. You got serotonin that will be boosted in a 24 hour fast. It just makes you in a good mood and helps regulate your appetite. Um, you've got dopamine that is gonna give you that real satisfied and emotional response that's gonna come after the 24 hour fast, you're gonna become more dopamine sensitive, and then you can calm your brain um, by making sure that you suppress glutamate, um, that you do more fasting. I mean, as many fasts, all the seven fasts are gonna help with that GABA production. So, super cool, right? I mean, we, happiness doesn't have to be your circumstances all in perfect order. Happiness could be from you getting these chemicals working in the right in the right sequence. So, and getting those receptor sites open and understanding that fasting is not suffering, fasting can be true joy when these chemicals kick in. So, as always, let me know how that worked for you because I had a ton of fun research, researching this and I wanna make sure that it's hitting home with you guys, that it's helpful. If you want more on the dopamine uh, resistance, let's go down that path. And um, I hope that helps.